show your support and enter the competition. Simply follow, subscribe and comment. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to Buy, Try or Fly. In this series I review the PlayStation 4 free games for PlayStation Plus subscribers and let you know whether I think you should buy them, try them out or fly away from them as fast as you can. Now in this video I will be looking at Mafia 3 but quickly before I do just a reminder that my competition for three WWE figurines is still underway and because of kind of being away towards the end of the month I've actually extended this competition another week until the 7th of September. All you need to do to enter is to follow me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly subscribe to this YouTube channel and on any video that I have released in the month of August 2018 just comment the word zombie. Also you may have noticed earlier in the week that there was no NXT talk either on this channel or on my Podbean page. That is because of being away um, I'm unable to watch the NXT programming and have not been able to watch WOS Wrestling either for the Podbean version. So for the next few weeks that will be absent but the Tuesday and Saturday videos will still be running as normal. Final piece of admin, you may also have seen last Sunday a few tweets that I sent out regarding uh, collaboration work that I was doing with a friend of mine who has his own channel called Pokey Pidge and we were just kind of playing through some old Pokemon games because that's kind of his thing so we kind of threw our po his Pokemon and my kind of retro gaming thing together there will be another video uploaded this Sunday on his channel as well a link to that will be in the description below and the Sunday following that and the one after will be two videos coming out on my channel here um, and they are the final two videos of a small four part series we will hopefully be doing another mini series in the not too distant future again splitting those videos across both of our channels right admin out of the way let's look at Mafia 3 so in Mafia 3 you control Lincoln Clay and he is a, an African American man in 1968 um, Louisiana and he has just been discharged from the uh, US Army after the Vietnam War. Now he was kind of going home and just sort of saying goodbye to his brother and his kind of adoptive father and he was going to kind of make a new life for himself out west. However, because of issues uh, involving sort of gang crime, uh, it starts off with an issue with some Haitians, he kind of gets dragged back into uh, kind of a life of organised crime that he was sort of involved with before joining the army. Now it's important to note that while he was there he rose through the ranks quite quickly and caught the eye of one or two um, kind of commanding officers there, one of which will play quite an integral part in the story um, and the kind of the beginning chunk of the game sees you kind of taking care of the Haitians and setting up for um, a kind of a heist on the Federal Reserve in order to kind of get access to their safes and drill through from outside as well and deposit all um, of the money onto a boat and kind of make your getaway and the beginning chunk of the game it kind of jumps between um, this mission and the mission with the Haitians as well as kind of interview style cutscenes with various other supporting characters just kind of describing the world at large that you're dealing with and explaining who Lincoln Clay was and it's very important that we use the word was um, it's all done kind of in a retrospective manner by people who are speaking many many years after these events have taken place now by the time you get to sort of the end of the heist something happens uh, I won't go into detail what because 
it's quite a major plot spoiler but after that thing happens you are kind of charged with taking control of the city uh, district by district in order to overthrow uh, kind of a mafia gang lord um, who's kind of taken control over the entire city and delegated various different people to all the different sections of the city so what you do is you kind of try and break into their ranks um, interrogate some of their informants take out things like their warehouses or drug operations in order to get these kind of smaller um, kind of district managers if you like obviously the game doesn't call them that but let's kind of see them as that for the time being um, you kind of draw them out into the open in order to take them out and then gain control of that district you then kind of allocate that district to one of your own managers essentially and they kind of deal with the goings on in that district and provide you with a cut and the idea of this is to kind of build up your um, funds as much as possible because once you have kind of dealt with all these mini districts and taken them over um, you you have sort of a hit list and at the top of this hit list is this mafia kingpin and under him he kind of has his lieutenants and under them he kind of has the kind of goes down in a, a pyramid type hierarchy um, and you're kind of taking out these bottom run guys in order to get to the next level and so that you can work your way up this pyramid to get to this main guy at the top and most of the missions that you're doing certainly in the early stages as I said are taking over kind of these enemy strongholds um, and sort of destroying their warehouses um, in one of them they've turned um, I think it's an old uh, cinema into a brothel so the idea there is to kind of set the um, the workers free and those sorts of things there's another one to do with all the um, docks and the unions there and the workers um, and the fact that they're kind of not allowing uh, certain workers to get work permits and because of that they're not able to then kind of um, use the docks and the warehouses as a smuggling ring and so you kind of work your way into that to get rid of those guys to bring the uh, other members back in and as you do this as I said, the kind of district managers have to kind of go down to these warehouses or whatever to um, kind of take over the proceedings themselves so that they don't get it in the neck and then that is your chance to kind of take them out. In terms of the um, storyline itself, it's very well paced. Um, there are plenty of cutscenes in between these missions to kind of expand on what's going on. As I said, something happens in order to set all this up um, and kind of the, the chunk after that is what I've really been getting into. Um, it becomes slightly lighter on the story certainly to begin with um, and kind of then starts ramping up as you get closer and closer to this big kingpin. Now in terms of the actual gameplay itself, it's very akin to uh, Grand Theft Auto where you're sort of walking around a sandbox open world type area. Um, there are various kind of enemy strongholds here and there throughout the city and you are kind of required to drive around much as you would do in Grand Theft Auto um, and kind of get out of your car and deal with people with kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat and various kind of gunplay mechanics uh, interspersed with that as well to take out these various uh, groups. The driving um, works pretty well. I mean, you're dealing with kind of 1960s um, cars um, and vehicles, so they're not as quick as you would expect and their handling is a bit ropey, but it kind of adds to the authenticity of the era. Um, the gunplay works very very well and you're able to at the start and in the options as well as you go through set kind of how easy you want the shooting mechanics in terms of kind of an auto lock on. 
there's sort of a middle ground, um, a very easy mode, and then you can turn it off completely and do everything freehand for kind of the ultimate challenge. There is also a very, very good cover system, um, which works very well, and certainly when you make your way into these areas in the first instance, you are grossly outnumbered, so that comes into play very, very quickly, and is something you have to get used to pretty quick as well. Um, as well as kind of drawing the enemies out of their kind of patterned positions that they roam around in order to kind of take them out one by one. But what is very good about this system is it's not flawless, it's not completely perfect. So there will be times when you um, kind of mistime something or you're spotted by somebody else or when you've done your attack on somebody, you kind of have to bail and leave a dead body in somebody's uh, sight. So they then kind of cotton on to the fact that you are there and something's happening. And this in turn kind of invites the um, gunplay mechanic into things. And what I would suggest is you do kind of take the stealthiest approach um, that you can in terms of your own ability. But when that inevitably does kind of mess up, it is worth kind of trying to kind of stay with the mission and sort things out with the guns and, and various equipment that you have been given, just so that you get a balance of both sides of things. Certainly wouldn't suggest going in all guns blazing, although that is a perfectly viable option. And if you are particularly well versed with stealth, um, the mechanics are good enough in the game that you possibly could get through some of these areas completely 100% um, sort of unnoticed um, if you are kind of that able and that way inclined. Now, as you go through and kind of delegate these different areas to these kind of managers that you have, you unlock um, kind of different abilities as you go through from being able to kind of call um, weapons drops to wherever you are so that you can purchase new guns and ammo kind of like that to being able to pay for a kind of a three-man hit squad to come in and join you and even up the odds and as you go through these kind of develop uh, more and more throughout the game you are then able to um, boost your stats so that you have kind of more um, health bars and you have um, more ammo things like that speaking of health bars you do only start off with two and although your health does regenerate um, if you go beyond kind of the halfway point of that it only regenerates halfway so you are then forced to use medical kits in order to boost that up to maximum health again um, it's very quick going down and a lot slower going up so you could kind of find yourself cornered and lose your health very, very quickly if you do not have any medipacks and you're not kind of paying attention to healing yourself with them as and when you need to. And because your health doesn't regenerate to 100% very, very quickly um, and easily, you kind of don't feel completely invincible, which is very nice. Now, the overall mechanics of the game are very, very good. Uh, this is a PlayStation 4 game, so it plays very, very nicely, very smoothly. The one thing I will say is the graphics, to be honest, it looks, because it was in development for a very, very long time, and it looks like um, a PlayStation 3 game that has kind of been upscaled to PlayStation 4, and at first I assumed it had initially been released on PlayStation 3, kind of been polished a bit and then re-released on PlayStation 4, but that isn't the case. It did originally come out on the PlayStation 4. However, I think that when they started development of this, they probably intended for it to be a PlayStation 3 game and kind of managed to upscale things ever so slightly. But it definitely doesn't feel like um, a normal PlayStation 4 game in terms of the aesthetics of it. Everything kind of has a weird shine to it. Um, and the graphics are not terrible, but you can tell that there are a lot of games out there that um, are probably older than this, actually, that do look better. But, I mean, graphics aren't 
kind of my main priority with games, so I don't really mind too much. And the game itself comes with a fully licensed sort of mid to late 60s soundtrack on the various radio stations. So I'm more won over by that, to be honest. That is a brilliant era of music for me personally. It's sort of what I grew up listening to, thanks to having slightly older parents than probably most of my school friends did. So a lot of that I recognise and enjoy kind of driving around listening to that. Uh, that's kind of more important to me than what a game looks like. So buy, try or fly then. Now this game is listed on PlayStation Store currently for $34.99. And because of that reason I'm going to have to say try. There is no way you should be purchasing this from the PlayStation Store for that amount of money. That is absolutely ridiculous. However, there is a free demo on there. So it's definitely worth, even if you're listening to this after this um, game kind of goes past its free status for PlayStation Plus subscribers, it's worth having a go on the free demo and seeing what you think of it. But if open world sandbox games are kind of your thing, um, then it's definitely worth at least trying this game out. However, what I will say is if you are able to pick this up for sort of £20 or under, it is definitely then worth a purchase. So if you can find it in a second-hand store or on eBay, or if they happen to do a deal on PlayStation Store and reduce it down under the £20 mark, then I would strongly suggest purchasing this game, especially if things like Grand Theft Auto are your kind of game and you enjoy this kind of semi-open world sandbox game with um, kind of gunplay mechanics um, and a decent engaging story. I've looked at various reviews of this and they have said that the story is the strongest point of the game, which is brilliant for me because that is kind of my thing that's what I'm more bothered about and um, there were a few people that said that the mechanics were a bit clunky I don't really see where they're coming from in that unless by now that's all been patched out the one kind of air of caution I will put on this is the mission certainly in terms of taking over all these different districts can become a little bit samey but they're kind of smaller cogs in what becomes a bigger machine. So if you can kind of get yourself past that, then it shouldn't really be a problem. But other than that, I would highly suggest buying this game for under £20. Or if you're still able to get a free download, make sure that you do do that before the games change in September. So there we go, they were my thoughts on Mafia 3. Please let me know what you think of the game if you've been able to play it this month in the comments below. I will be back next month with September's offerings of free PlayStation Plus games. But until then, I've been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.